Hello YouTube and Preppers, this is the Comms Prepper with a video about multi-use radio service or MERS. I've been getting a lot of questions about this and specifically uh, is it permitted to program dual band type radios like the Waxon or iComs or Yaesu for MERS channels and uh, operate? And the short answer is no. FCC regulations prohibit using non-certified MERS radios for MERS operations. But we'll go over the MERS basics. MERS is a license free service but as I just said, equipment used on MERS has to be specifically certified by the FCC for MERS. MERS has five channels. It's frequency modulated. The radios are limited to two watts. External antennas are permitted. No amplifiers are permitted. And if you do use an external antenna, there are height restrictions associated with external antennas. The five MERS frequencies start at 151.820 megahertz and the last one is up to 154.600 megahertz but you'll notice in red there's a specifically assigned bandwidth for each channel or deviation permitted and the first three channels have 11.25 and the last two have 20 kilohertz of deviation permitted and if you're familiar with programming radios you may see in some software where there's a pull down narrow band or wide band, that option doesn't match up with MERS because typical narrow band is 12.5 kilohertz and typical wide band is 25 kilohertz. So MERS is using what I would say is a non-standard deviation assignment. So setting the regulatory prohibitions aside, technically you can't program a non-MERS radio to match the exact technical specifications required by the MERS radio service. And to give you an example of that, here's a printout of a spec sheet for a common business band radio or commercial radio out there for the VHF range. And if you look at FM modulation, your two options for deviation are 12.5 kilohertz or 25 slash 30 kilohertz. Well, what you don't see there is 11.25 or 20 kilohertz. So if you attempt to use a non-MERS radio that have these deviation options, it's not going to technically match up with a MERS radio and it's going to impact signal quality and fidelity and clarity and violate FCC regulations. So to go into wideband and narrowband a little bit, I thought I'd do a quick recap or summary on FM modulation without going into great depth. The green side wave on this slide is an unmodulated FM signal and you'll see that by the peaks of the sine wave are evenly spaced perfectly across. The red line is supposed to represent a voice signal, your transmission. And the impact of your transmission on that unmodulated carrier is the blue sine wave below. And you'll see the, the peaks now are spreading out and coming closer together. And that's deviation. And that's how your voice is pulled out of a receiver. The receiver is looking for that change in that frequency to extract your voice and pass it to the speaker at the received radio and that's frequency modulation and that deviation is limited by FCC regulations and in the case of MERS a deviation can exceed 11.25 kilohertz not 12.5 or 25 kilohertz but 11.25 or 20 kilohertz and I, and I hope I don't get too deep in the weeds here and confuse you so I have a, a screenshot of a spectrum analyzer to try to give you a visual of what I'm trying to explain here the center of the spectrum analyzer is the assigned channel for an FM signal. And the waves rippling out are the deviation from the center of the channel. And in a wideband radio, the FCC permits that deviation to go out, let's say, as far as the red lines I put in the screenshot. And that would be a wideband deviation for transmitting your signal. So in an effort to get more channels compressed into a smaller spectrum, the FCC came out with a narrow banding mandate, and that would be represented by the yellow lines. And that's a narrow band signal where the FCC says, your deviation can't exceed past these yellow lines, making room for more channels. So that's the difference between narrow band and wide band, is how much deviation from the center frequency, the assigned channel, is permitted and they can fit more channels in. MERS radios that are available on the market today are few. 
Uh, Motorola appears to have discontinued their MERS radios. Uh, there's a company, Dakota Alert, they make a radio that's still certified by the FCC, and Ritron also makes a radio. Now, all three of these radios, searching on Amazon, I found are out there. But as a comms prepper recommendation, I would not invest any resources or time pursuing a MERS comms solution for your preps. There's many other options out there that are just as capable, if not better. Uh, and MERS is, is an obsolete technology, and fewer and fewer vendors are making radios for MERS. Now, if you have these dual band radios like these Waxons and stuff, I'd recommend programming them up for receive mode. So at least you can hear what's going on out there. Uh, that's permitted. That's why there's no restriction on the receive bandwidth of some of these radios. But for transmit, one, it's not permitted, and two, you couldn't technically match the specifications required to be compliant with MERS regulations. So my summary on MERS is one, the radios must be certified for MERS operations by the FCC to operate within the letter of the law. There's power limits which limit the operational effectiveness of MERS. External antennas can improve range but then there are height restrictions associated with that and fewer and fewer vendors are offering MERS radios so I think it's a pointless pursuit to go down the path of MERS when there's so many other FM, VHF, and UHF options out there for preppers to consider when building a comm plan for their preps. And as always, thank you for watching and thank you for subscribing. This has been the Comms Prepper.